Good morning, everyone. It's Mrs. Capizzi, and I just wanted to say hi, and I miss you guys so much. Um, I set up a little temporary work desk in my workout room, so that's where I am filming this today. And I wanted to go through what you're going to be doing today for day 11. Um, but also remember, finish the work from the last two weeks before you start the new work. So if you have any old work, make sure you do that first. And also, if you have not gotten your packets yet delivered to your house, please let us know ASAP so that we can get them to you. And um, hopefully everyone is caught up. And if you're not, just let us know and we'd be happy to either talk with you on the phone or video chat or whatever to get you caught up. So here we go. For today, we're gonna be doing a new warm up where you're gonna be picking one problem each day. And then we're gonna go through a regular lesson. So today we're gonna be starting with 10-1 and we're going to be doing 10-1 for three days. So hopefully by Wednesday, you guys will be feeling pretty comfortable with this. And also if you have Miss Landis or Mrs. Capizzi, this should be a review lesson because we've actually done this lesson already in class, but you do have to do it again. So, and if you haven't had Mrs. Capizzi, I'm going to walk you through it and you will be totally fine. So, let me put this down and I need to flip the camera back around. So that, now, this is not part of what you guys have to do, but I thought it was important since we haven't been doing um, fractions for a couple weeks. I did want to go ahead and do a little review with you. So, you guys just need to follow along. So here, get even closer. So there's just a few vocabulary words that I want to, that I would like to review with you guys. So we've got equivalent fractions, and those are fractions that are worth the same amount. So for example, one half and two fourths. There is a mixed number, and then we also have fraction and whole number. So let's take a look at number one. It says a blank has a whole number and a fraction. So that would be something like this, two and one third. Two being the whole number and one third being the fraction. So that would be called a mixed number because it's a mix of a whole number and a fraction. So if I wrote these separately, two is a whole number and one third is a fraction. So if I smush them together, then it becomes a mixed number. Number two, fractions that name the same region part of a set or part of a segment is called, that would be called equivalent fractions. So for example, if I have a cake and I cut it um, in half and then, so if my son says, oh mom, I cut this into two pieces and he says, I'm going to eat one half of it. And I said, no, you're not. That's not, that's too big. So then I said, make one more even cut. So he goes like this. So first he told me he was going to eat one half. But now the two of us are going to split that one half and he's going to eat this piece and I'm going to eat this piece. So one half is also equivalent to two out of four. And then a blank has a numerator and a denominator. So that would be a fraction. All right, so the next section identifying fractions is, so remember you can write a fraction is a part out of a whole. So here the part is the yellow and the whole thing would be one, two, three, four pieces. So the fraction here would be one fourth. The fraction here, there's two orange pieces but three total. So that would be two out of three or two thirds. And this blue one, there's one, two, three, four, five blue pieces. So that's my part, and then the whole thing would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, ace. And here, 
for number seven, I can see that there's one part shaded out of one, two, three, four, five. So that fraction would be one fifth. And here the purple, I've got one, two, three, four, five parts shaded out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five tenths. And we also talked about in class, if I can if I can multiply the numerator by two, so and get the denominator, so five times two is ten, that means that is equivalent to one half. So over here, the pink is also one half. All right, so unit fractions, that's gonna be really important for what we're doing in today's lesson for 10-1. So I do have some fraction strips here. So it says three copies of one six. So here I'm gonna get my one six fraction pieces. If I have three of them, so remember, multiplication is also known as repeated addition. So if I, I can do this, 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6. So three copies of 1, 6 would be 3, oops, I have a magic pen that erases, would be 3, 6. So up here I would write 3, 6. But today we're going to be making the transition of writing these problems as multiplication. So this is my unit fraction because a unit fraction, remember, the, the numerator is 1. So I have three 1, 6 pieces. So that would be three of them times 1, 6, which would be 3 times 1 on the top and then the denominator of 6, so that would be 3, 6. And let's take a look at this one, 3 copies of 1 tenth. So you can see the 1 tenth pieces are smaller than the 1 6 piece. So 3 copies of 1 tenth would be equal to 3 tenths, and I could write that as either three copies, so three times one tenth is three tenths, or I can write that as one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth is three tenths. So you guys are, got the idea, I'm sure. So here, nine copies of one twelfth would be nine twelfths. So that would be 9 times 1 twelfth, which is 9 times 1 over 12, or 9 twelfths. Here, 6 copies of 1 eighth is 6 eighths. 5 copies of 1 fifth is 5 fifths. And we know when the numerator and the denominator are the same, that that equals 1 whole. So I could rewrite that as 1 whole. And then seven copies of one tenth is seven tenths. So I'm going to put my fraction pieces aside. And let's take a look at the equivalent fraction. So we went over that vocabulary word up here. It means fractions that have that name the same region, part of a set, or part of a segment. So they are equivalent or equal. So it says draw a rectangle that shows eight equal parts. So I'm going to do the best that I can to draw a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there's my rectangle, and I'm going to show eight equal parts. So I'm going to first divide it in half this way, in half this way, and then I'm going to make each of these pieces in one half. So now I've got eight equal pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it says shade more than 3 eighths. So if I shade 3 eighths here, one, two, three. Now it said to shade more than 3 eighths, 
but less than five eighths. So five eighths would be if I also shaded this piece and this piece. So five eighths would be too much. Three eighths is too little. So they're actually looking for what is in between three eighths and five eighths, which would be four eighths. So if I shade one more piece, that's more than three eighths, but less than five eighths. So it says, what fraction did you model? So I modeled the fraction four eighths and use multiplication or division to write two equivalent fractions. So we did this in topic nine. So if I have four eighths, to find an equivalent fraction, the number you divide or multiply by has to be equivalent to one. So the numerator and denominator has to be the same. So I know that those are four and eight are both even numbers. So I'm going to divide by two over two. And remember the numerator and denominator have to match. So four divided by two is two and eight divided by two is four. So I know over here, I'm gonna write, I know four eighths equals two fourths. Now you can also use multiplication to find an equivalent fraction. So again, I'm gonna start with four eighths. And you can really multiply by any equivalent of one. I'm gonna choose three thirds. So I've got four times three is 12 and eight times three is 24. So that is also equivalent to 12 over 24. So that is your review. So hopefully that will help before the lesson today. And just a couple vocabulary words. Um, a unit fraction is a fraction with a numerator of one. So all of these fractions have a numerator of one one half, one third, one fifth, one tenth, one twelfth. And remember the numerator is the top number, the denominator is the bottom number. And we talked about a trick to remember that. N means north or going up and D stands for down. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual lesson for today. And we've got, I'm just gonna move my camera back a little bit. There, that's better. So day 11, so let's um, read through the solve and share and then you can pause the video, try it, and then restart the video when you're ready. So Khalil and Mara were working on their math homework. Mara wrote four fifths as one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. And Khalil looked at Mara's work and said, I think you could use multiplication to rewrite your equation. Is Khalil's observation correct? Explain. So go ahead and pause the video, write your explanation, and then start the video when you are ready. All right, welcome back everyone. So let's take a look. So we looked over this in the review and I see that I have one, two, three, four copies of one-fifth. So I'm gonna take my one-fifth pieces and lay them out one, two, three, four. I've got four copies of one-fifth. So they wrote that as, um, so Mara wrote that as one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth, which equals four-fifths. And then, so this was Mara. And then Kyle, I mean, sorry, Khalil, said that you can use multiplication. So if he was paying attention to Mrs. Capizzi's review, he would know that I can rewrite that as four copies times one fifth also equals four fifth. So yes, because remember we always write our explanations using a sentence. So I want, if you don't have a sentence, go ahead and write one now. It says, yes, Khalil's observation is correct because four times one fifth 
also equals four fifths. So here, Mara used repeated addition, where you repeat the same number over and over again. And here, Khalil used um, a shortcut by using multiplication. So we do not have to do the look back today. So let's go ahead and flip the page and take a look at our essential question. So how can you describe a fraction using a unit fraction? And remember, a unit fraction has a numerator of 1. So here, um, our little friend here gives us the definition again. A unit fraction is a fraction that describes one part of the whole. Unit fractions always contain the numerator 1. So here, let's, it says Courtney ran 3 fourths of the way to school. Describe 3 fourths using unit fractions. So here, you can see that would be 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. So I have my unit fraction pieces here. 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and another 1 fourth would be equal to 3 fourths. So over here, to rewrite that, um, since the if this is divided into four equal parts, each part is one fourth, and since there's three fourths, you can write that as three times one fourth, or three one fourth parts. And in the review we were doing, we could also say that's three copies of one fourth. So you can see over here, three times one fourth is repeated addition. You're repeating it three times, one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. So if you're doing it this way, this would be repeated addition. And over here, they're using the multiplication. So since this is a whole number, you would multiply times the numerator, three times one over four, three times one is three, three fourths. So 3 fourths is a multiple of 1 fourth. And remember, a multiple is a result of multiplying a number by a whole number. So multiples is just like skip counting. So if I was counting by 1 fourth, just like when I'm counting by fours, I would get 4, 8, 12, etc. If I'm counting by 1 fourth, I would get 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, etc. Okay, so, and we also are not doing the um, convince me today, so let's go ahead and get into your work for today. So let's just take a look at the other example. It says describe four, I'm sorry, excuse me, describe five fourths as a multiple of a unit fraction. So you can see here, the, the fraction 5 fourths is unique because the numerator is more than the denominator. So I know that 5 fourths is going to be more than one whole. And you can see here, when you lay out 5 1 fourth pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one whole would be 4 fourths, and this little extra would be five fourths. So this whole thing is more than one whole. So you can use repeated addition. So they repeat one fourth five times. One, two, three, four, five. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals five fourths. Or to shorten that up, you can use multiplication. So five times one over four or five fourths. So here, let's take a look. So you're responsible for doing one through six today. And for number one, it says draw a picture to explain why three fifths equals three times one fifth. So you're going to draw using fraction strips, but using one fifth pieces instead of the one fourth pieces that we used in the example above. However, if you look back at your solvent share, they used one-fifth pieces. So here they used four one-fifth pieces, and here you only need to use three one-fifth pieces, so you can use the solvent share to help you with that. 
For number two, write a multiplication equation to show each part of the following story. Mark's family ate seven-fourths chicken pot pies for dinner. There are seven people in Mark's family, and each family member ate one-fourth of a pie. So here, this is going to be your whole number times, we know this has to be a unit fraction, and the unit fraction is one-fourth. So basically, you're just going to fill in how many people are in Mark's family there. And for three, four, five, and six, um, they give you the boxes for three and four, but you can go ahead and draw them. So this is gonna be your whole number followed by a fraction. So this will be a whole number followed by a fraction, a unit fraction. So we know that there's gonna to have to be a one on top here. So here, blank times one-third, my numerator is two, so that would be two copies of one-third. So you guys can go ahead and finish the rest. Remember to email your teachers or dojo message us if you have any questions, and have a wonderful day. Um, miss you guys.